G'day and welcome to the Bernie Gannon Show. I'm still looking for a name for this program, so if you have any ideas, please send them through. We have a problem with cancel culture, a massive problem. You may not be familiar with the term cancel culture, but you do know what it is. You can feel it wrapped around you, watching you, just waiting to squeeze the life out of you if you say the wrong thing at the wrong time, at the wrong place, or to the wrong person. Cancel culture is that fear inside you right now that you could lose your job if the HR department found out that you watched this video. There is no better example of cancel culture at work than at the New York Times. Now, I know this takes us from Australia to America, but right now, we need to get our heads around what is happening in the States. The battles being waged there today will dramatically impact us here in Australia for many reasons. Our very national security is on the line, depending on who emerges victorious in this civil war for the soul of the United States. Now, last week at the New York Times, Barry Weiss resigned as an opinion editor. She wrote on her webpage that she was leaving the New York Times because, and these are her words, what rules remain at the Times are applied with extreme selectivity. If a person's ideology is in keeping with the new orthodoxy, their work remains unscrutinized. Everyone else lives in fear of the digital thunderdrome. Online venom is excused so long as it is directed at the proper targets. Op-eds that would easily have been published just two years ago would now get an editor or writer in serious trouble, if not fired. They are her words. Weiss claimed that she was the target of harassment at the paper and that the online mob in the Twitter sphere was now the ultimate editor of the New York Times. Weiss's resignation is a great example of the viciousness of cancel culture. More importantly, her resignation is also a perfect example of the failure to fight back against cancel culture. There are two points to take away from her resignation. Firstly, the aim of cancel culture is to get anyone who is not with the program fired. So, understanding this, you should also instinctively know that you do not resign. You do not apologise. You do not back down. Barry Weiss might have raised attention to the issue of cancel culture with her resignation, but Barry Weiss is not part of the solution to this problem. She is, in fact, part of the problem. She did not have the courage to resist. Do not resign or apologise for your views. That is the most important thing you can do to preserve freedom. Secondly, cancel culture seeks to radically limit what is permissible speech. It does so through propaganda. So it comes as no surprise that Barry Weiss, who is currently in a lesbian relationship, who supports abortion and gay marriage, who describes herself as left-leaning, and who admits that she cried when Donald Trump was elected, is now labelled as conservative. She is nothing of the sort. What we have here is fake news and propaganda that is deliberately designed to reframe what conservative means, so that real conservatives are easier to target in the future. Actually, what we have here is proof of the left eating its own. The left has become so extreme that someone like Barry Weiss is no longer welcome at the most famous left-wing newspaper in the world. We should acknowledge Barry Weiss's resignation for what it is, proof that extreme is never enough for the left-wing mob. They always want more, and if they get their way, it won't just be jobs that people will lose. Next stop from where we are right now is people being jailed for their views. After that, we will see people lined up against a wall and shot. And it won't just be people like you and me that the mob will target. Pro-abortion lefty lesbians like Barry Weiss will be in just as much danger. When societies descend into that level of madness, no one is safe. So we need to fight back against cancel culture today. To do so, we need to understand the real drivers of cancel culture. It is not the mob. It is the state which works with and empowers the mob. Cancel culture is a public-private partnership. Its foundation lies in the human rights industry, which has nothing to do with protecting human rights and everything to do with attacking Western civilization 
using the coercive power of the state. This industry is filled with taxpayer-funded activist bureaucrats. They believe that they were born to play Big Brother. They are the thought police. The clients of this industry are the radical woke activists who are constantly searching for offence. Together, the activists and the activist bureaucrats know that they have enough power through the power of bullying to sack or silence anyone who steps out of line. That's because over the last generation, this industry has grown like a cancer and has inserted itself into business, gaining control of policy and human resource planning. Workplace codes of conduct now essentially replicate these human rights laws. Social media platforms also control what we can and can't say. The correct term for this state of affairs is political slavery. We are enmeshed in it today. It's why you instinctively know to watch what you say. This will not change until human rights laws that limit our ability to communicate are repealed, government departments stop wasting time and money promoting radical social causes, and woke temples such as the Australian Human Rights Commission are bulldozed. And to be honest, I cannot see any of that happening anytime soon. We simply do not have enough conservatives involved in politics. Truth be told, most conservatives chose to cancel themselves before cancel culture even showed up. Thanks for watching. To help more people access common sense, please remember to like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon on your screen. To support more production of conservative new media like this, please visit goodsource.news support and donate what you can. This is too important to not get behind. I'll see you next week on The Bernard Gainer Show. The Bernard Gaynor Show is a production of The Good Source, hosted by Bernard Gaynor. To watch, listen to, or read more content without the SJW PC fact filter, visit goodsource.news, good S-A-U-C-E dot news. Become a Good Source supporter for exclusive access to live and unedited interview recordings, including the conversations before and after the show.